The cybersecurity industry has gathered in San Francisco to urge companies to better protect themselves from attack. While much of the attention in recent years has been on advanced persistent threats, such as Chinese state-sponsored hackers, many are saying that the vast majority of attacks could be solved by better cyber hygiene. One of the things that we've been telling customers a lot you know, recently, um, and in the past as well, is the, you know, this idea that really 90% of, of information security is akin to remembering to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. Um, you know, I think the other 10% is, is quite difficult, and that's where uh, I think human creativity can come into it to, to resolve that piece of it. But for the better part, it's really about making sure you're patching your systems, you're doing all of the simple things that, that you know, are more about discipline than they are about any kind of creativity in solving a security problem. Uh, if you look at you know some of the big breaches last year, um, you know JP Morgan Chase, it came out that it was a it was a web server that was basically forgotten about and wasn't a part of their regular security program that that got hacked into. Um, you know Target was a was a HVAC system that was on the internet that had a vulnerability. Calls for cybersecurity to be treated as a public health issue have grown louder this year in the face of a rising cyber threat. So I think there is a real case to be made for treating something like cybersecurity along the same lines as we treat other public health issues. And I think part of that is that what we're seeing right now is um, attackers essentially picking off individual organizations one at a time. Whereas really what we should be looking for is, you know, in the same sort of terms that you would think of um, treatment of uh, infectious diseases, we're really looking for something like a herd immunity, right, where organizations can actually strengthen each other as opposed to operate as single weak point targets. Even though their job is to sell technologies to help protect businesses, some in the industry believe it has become too obsessed with the latest security gadget without implementing security properly. Typically, they are allowing too much focus on things like infrastructure and pieces of technology. Really not enough thinking about the impact of the individuals and the people within the organization. And often that translates to really allowing too many people with too much access to too much sensitive information and not enough oversight. What I've seen in the industry is a trend to kind of get away from that basic blocking and tackling of, of threat prevention. Uh, it's been become very sexy to do kind of detection and eradication, which you absolutely have to do. All right, but we've kind of gotten away from basic, you know, blocking bad guys from getting in the network. And the reason that's important, that basic hygiene function, is that we can take that giant haystack of attacks and reduce it to a manageable number so that we can actually see what's going on in our networks. But in an industry still reeling from the Edward Snowden revelations, cybersecurity chief executives are unsure how much they would like to rely on the government to set and police basic standards of cyber hygiene. The level of involvement that the government should have in pushing cyber hygiene to either individuals or to companies is really challenging because um, there are people who are going to say that it should be like a vaccine. You, know, you require an MMR shot for kids before they can go to school because you don't want the absence of that vaccine to cause harm to other kids. Likewise, uh, you can make the argument that it's important for uh, a cyber inoculation of sorts to take place on all uh, secure on all. Um, laptops, computers, cell phones, mobile devices, and others. Uh, the challenge with that is, is that you're, you're forcing people to take a stance with something. It'd be like almost invasion of privacy to a certain degree, but invasion of privacy in a manner that, that helps bring back uh, security for other people. So it's a, it's a very delicate challenge. How the U.S. government addresses that very delicate challenge will become clearer after Congress passes the information sharing bill it is currently considering. Then it will be up to President Obama to decide what the next step is in cyber legislation. Hannah Kushler for the Financial Times in San Francisco.